Hi, I'm Andrew Bean from the British Geological Survey and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our work in the Micronutrient Action Policy Support or MAPS project, uh, developing a decision support tool for investigating the scale and geographic distribution of micronutrient availability in sub-Saharan Africa. So micronutrient deficiencies, uh, so-called hidden hunger, have, can have serious ramifications for the individuals affected um, as well as the economies of the countries in which they live. Um, they're a global problem, but they're of significant concern in sub-Saharan Africa. And work to alleviate these deficiencies uh, aligns particularly with SDGs 2 and 3, um, particularly SDG 2, um, access to safe and nutritious food. Um, so micronutrient availability in populations can vary for a number of reasons, um, and, can, and can vary spatially, for example, in relation to soil geochemistry. Um, so that can have an impact on the nutrients that are taken up by plants that subsequently become foodstuffs. Um, the data available for evaluating the, um, and understanding the scale and location of these um, deficiencies can be quite fragmented in its availability. Um, it can create a barrier to, uh, for its use um, to plan interventions, uh, particularly by stakeholders in the very nations where the impact of these micronutrient deficiencies um, are the most severe. And this is where the, the MAPS project comes in. So we integrate uh, a range of heterogeneous <coughs> data sets, um, ranging from diet data relating to uh, food that's consumed, as well as the nutrient content um, of those foodstuffs. Uh, biomarker measurements, so direct measurements of um, micronutrient biomarkers from blood and urine samples, um, projections of micronutrient availability into the future based on various social and uh, climate projections, along with a range of auxiliary data sets um, that are used as part of the analyses. Um, so the common factor between all these data sets is that they all relate to some specific geographic location, be that either point data or a kind of wider polygonal area. Um, so we're all here to talk about software, so what do we use to wrangle and process and visualize this data? So our core data store is spatially enabled Postgres, um, and then the data is served uh, by a REST API, OGC web services through GeoServer, and the metadata is cataloged in GeoNetwork. Uh, we also make use of OpenCPU to provide a REST API on top of more complicated um, geostatistical processes using R. In the front end, it's a web application uh, using Angular, and then Leaflet and Chart.js for visualizing and presenting the data. And we also draw upon a number of other open source projects, um, for example, FIDA for collating user feedback, Unleash for feature flags, and Plausible for analytics. Uh, and of course, all of our code, our methods, our processes are all open source as well on our GitHub repository, so on our GitHub organization, so um, invite you to look there. In terms of the outputs, I won't dwell too long on this just due to the, the length of the talk, but I'll provide just a few uh, screenshot examples of the decision support tool and the kind of data dashboard that we've produced, um, and just highlight that it is uh, available in open beta. We've uh, just recently released this, so please feel free to check it out. Um, on top of that, I should just say that although the, the web application is the primary output for our key stakeholders, uh, the API, web services, metadata catalog um, are all, again, first-class um, outputs and available for integration by other teams and other projects into existing workflows, new tools, etc. cetera. Um, and with that, I'm just going to say yeah, thank you for listening. Um, if you're interested in finding out more, please check out our various kind of web and, and GitHub pres um, presence. Um, or yeah, feel free to chat to me in any of the coffee breaks. I'd be very happy to talk further. Thank you very much.